60 seconds. Uh, people, that kind of behavior would not be tolerated in the toy. Yeah, George, can you please focus that goal? Whoa, look out, it's on fire! Fire! Thank you. Help! Help! Help me! Oh, thank you. Once or twice a day, I want you to look in the mirror and say to yourself, I love Lucy. All right. Okay, players, listen up. My name's Raul. I need to know a couple of things. First off, how many people are playing? So, you're playing with yourself, huh? Hey, no jokes from me. Just go ahead and type in your name, Lefty. Help! Help me! One more thing. You looking for a 21-question game or more like a 7-question game? Alrighty, that's what I needed to know. 30 seconds. Your buzzer is the letter B. That's B as in buttock. One singular buttock. You got something to back that up there, Sparky? Yeah, I didn't think so. 20, 20 seconds. seconds. Alright, listen up. Soon as you think you know the answer to a question, buzz in. Then you have to hit the number that corresponds to the answer you want. Got that? 10, Ten seconds. seconds. Good luck. Nine, let's make it happen eight, here. Let's lose that seven, desktop, please. Six, and five, go to black. Four. Three. Let's make this one sparkle. Places, try new crack me. Jack movies. Hold on to your ticket stub in case you need to leave the game at any time, okay? Ah, the game of solitaire. That's okay, I'm here alone too. So let's get it on. All right, hit me. I'm sorry, Dave. It's question one. <laughs> And I believe this one's called Funny Hair, Funny Shoes, and you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. You know, having a silly name like Elvis is bad enough, but which of these silly names is not the name of Elvis's character in one of his movies? Friday McDaniel, Deke Rivers, Pacer Burton, or Clint Reno? Thank God, it's Friday. The name would never work, because if someone said, Hey, Friday's gonna sing! Everybody would think it was Jack Webb and take off. Category, please. The category is The Fisher King Taking the Whiz. Looks like this one's going for a thousand bucks. All right, it's time for some filmmaker math. Got your calculators? Sydney Lumet film plus Terry Gilliam film equals what? One false move with a one trick pony, the five heartbeats give five fingers, 12 angry men with 12 monkeys, or 100 rifles and 101 Dalmatians. Lumet directed 12 Angry Men, and Gilliam directed 12 Monkeys. I'm in your shot? Screw you! Okay, I need a category. For your enjoyment, not without my paycheck, I'm giving out three grand for a right answer. And now, the burning question that has tortured America for years. From 1990 to 1995, who made the most made-for-TV movies? Meredith Baxter, Valerie Bertinelli, Patty Duke, or Melissa Gilbert? Here's what you should have picked. 
Valerie did four, Patty and Meredith did 11 apiece, but Melissa made 15. And we're not counting any very special little house on the prairies. I need a category. My question for... This category is known as Nay I Say. And you pop a right answer, you got 2,000 bucks. Put it in gear, cause here we go. If you're watching a movie and hear this sound, which of these performances are you watching? And here's the sound again. John Travolta in Urban Cowboy, Cloris Leachman in Young Frankenstein, Michael J. Fox in Homeward Bound, or Nancy Kerrigan in The Ice Cafe. Let's take a look at the right answer. Cloris Leachman's character, Frau Blucher, is so horrifying that every time her name is spoken, horses whinny. Do you have any idea how hard it is to find horses who understand German? Okay, pick a category. Let's give a nice warm welcome to... They might be actors. And we got 3,000 bucks in the pot. Heads up, here it comes. Let's say the band They Might Be Giants had written a love song for the movie They Might Be Giants. About which famous literary duo would they have been singing? Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn, Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson, Catherine and Heathcliff, or Romeo and Juliet? For some other question, that is the right answer. For the curious, here's the right answer. In the movie, George C. Scott has delusions of being Sherlock Holmes, and Joanne Woodward's a psychiatrist named Dr. Watson. So whenever Holmes says the game's afoot, you know he's just bragging about the size of his pipe. All right, hit me. She was built like an interstate cloverleaf, made for speed with all the right curves. All I could think of was six. Say hello to... How many Peters is that? This one can net you a grand. Okay, imagine this, if you will. Peter O'Toole's character in The Lion in Winter has been inspired by the nursery rhyme Peter, Peter, Pumpkin Eater. What might now be different in the film? He runs up and down stairs in his nightgown, he meets a pie man and makes a fortune, the queen is held in a pumpkin shell, or King Henry II is a gourd farmer. King Henry II, played by O'Toole, kept his wife, Eleanor of Aquitaine, imprisoned, and Peter Peter kept his wife in a pumpkin shell. Okay. Okay. Henry, dear. Let me out of this food pumpkin! Category, please. This one's called Kids These Days, and you're playing for $3,000 cash money. Strap on your helmet, we're going in. If Bernardo Bertolucci's 1979 film Luna were remade today as one of those Honey, I Did Something Wacky to the Kids movies, which of these would be the best title? Honey, I cut the kids' heads off. Honey, I had sex with the kids. Honey, the kids aren't ours. Or, Honey, I ate the kids. The correct answer is... In the 1979 film Luna, Jill Clayburgh has sex with her son. No brainer though, who wouldn't rather have sex with Jill Clayburgh than Rick Moranis? Okay, I need a category. Uh-oh, best of hits fried spore. It's time for a ticklish test come. Your gibberish category for today is tabloid headlines for the dead. This question's gonna start out at 5,000 big ones. Okay, you're gonna have about 30 seconds to solve this, but every second and a half, I'm taking away some money. Okay, now tell me this. What movie-related term does this rhyme with? 
Men flee Heaven Queen. First hint, it's an MPAA rating. What's the MPAA? It's an MPAA rating. Make your move, type your answer in, and hit return. You... Wow, two clues and you still got it wrong. That's gotta hurt. I want to take the kids out for some wholesome family entertainment, but all the movies are men flee heaven queen. In your case, the NC stands for no clue. All right, hit me. They said it was indestructible. Then disaster struck. Okay, give it up for Dead Men Walking. How does $2,000 sound? Okay, imagine that Bernie from Weekend at Bernie's and Harry from The Trouble with Harry have just been cast in a new movie called Three Dead Men and a Baby. Because this actor also played a corpse, who would be best suited to co-star with Bernie and Harry in Three Dead Men and a Baby? William Hurt, Kevin Costner, Danny Glover, or Kevin Klein? Betrayals. It would have been so beautiful if you'd only picked this. Ah! Kevin's got enough experience to play the third dead guy with the baby since he's the corpse in the big chill. Kevin will play the rugged yet sensitive dead man with a baby. Dada? I need a category. I proudly present Goodfellas and Wallflowers. $1,000 at stake on this one. Imagine this, your Martin Scorsese's date at the senior prom. It's the end of the night and Martin Scorsese tells you he's reserved the last waltz for the stars of his film, The Last Waltz. Who will be taking your place on Martin's shoulder? Members of the Grateful Dead, members of the band, members of Creedence Clearwater Revival, or members of the Eagles? I see a bad answer rising. <laughs> Bet you wish you'd pick this. <laughs> the Last Waltz is Scorsese's documentary about the last concert of the band. Now, after prom, I wonder who's gonna get dropped off last, Robbie Robertson or Rick Danko? That's it for round one, let's go to round two. Now remember, everything in round two is worth double, so heads up. Okay, pick a category. All right, here's the deal. Just call me Dead Meat. Two G's if you get this one right. Okay, imagine this. You live in L.A. and have decided to change your name. Coincidentally, the Terminator arrives in L.A. the same day you plan to do it. Given this, what would be the worst new name to choose? Nell Carter, Sarah Connor, Joanna Kramer, or Linda Hamilton? The original Terminator was looking to kill every Sarah Connor in Los Angeles, so that would be a pretty bad name to pick when he comes to town. Knock, knock. Who's there? Sarah. Sarah who? Sarah Connor in the house? Why, yes, just a... Okay, I need a category. Did someone order a 12-inch sausage? Oh my. Chew on this. America's scariest home videos. You give me a right answer, I give you a quick 4,000. Grease yourself up and get ready to wrestle. What horrific act would you expect to see Vincent Price perform in a movie titled Full House of 1,000 Dolls? Sell Mary-Kate Nashley to a slavery ring, lock John Stamos in a haunted house all night, dip Bob Saget in wax, or chop David Coulier in half with a pendulum? Lean in real close to the screen and kiss your cash goodbye. Shoulda picked this. In the House of 1000 Dolls, Vincent Price sells young girls into slavery. Yeah, with the Olsen twins, I hear Vincent had to offer a two-for-one deal. Category, please. Well, 
Well, what do we have here? At least three of us live in a yellow submarine. Better wake up. There's 6,000 bucks at stake. Okay, imagine it's the late 60s and the Beatles have just fired Ringo Starr and hired a famous movie character to take his place. If the new group were introduced as John, Paul, George, and the Ringo Kid, which actor would be playing drums? Paul Newman, Steve McQueen, Robert Mitchum, or John Wayne? In the 1965 film, The Cincinnati Kid, Steve McQueen played the Cincinnati Kid. <laughs> Let's see what a correct answer looks like. John Wayne played the Ringo Kid in the movie Stagecoach. Ringo, of course, played the slightly off-key kid in pretty much every Beatle film. All right, hit me. Let's see what we got going. Hammy and eggs. This one can net you $6,000. Okay, listen up. In England, they have the House of Lords, which is a governmental body. You have to be appointed to it, and, well, there aren't many actors there. Say the International House of Pancakes co-ops the House of Lords. If IHOP then features a special name for the first actor to enter the house, what will the dish be called? One a day plus irons, Rudy Tootie Fresh and Olivier, Grand Slam Gilgood, or Ed McKellen? Grand Slam Gil, not good. <laughs> Let me show you what someone smart would have picked. Lawrence Olivier was the first actor to enter the House of Lords. And then they slapped some butter and syrup on him and sold him with 12 eggs, a half pound of bacon, and a crate of melon for $2.99. <laughs> I need a category. In the deepest reaches of the Congo lies question 15. Coming at you, 70 sitcoms and gang violence. You get 4,000 clams for this one. Ready? Imagine Richie Cunningham's been singing a little Blueberry Hill with some Brooklyn girls he shouldn't have been messing with. If the Lords of Flatbush travel to Milwaukee to settle the score with the gang from Happy Days over Richie's philandering, what could you see in the ensuing rumble? Brando beating Potsy with a bike chain, Mickey Rourke bullwhipping Chachi, Dennis Hopper drop kicking Ralph Mouth, or Henry Winkler kicking his own ass. Henry Winkler plays the Fonz in Happy Days and Butchie Weinstein in The Lords of Flatbush. I don't know though, Fonzie beating himself? Did guys do that in the 50s? Okay, I need a category. Hey, alright, guess what you just picked? It's time to play Dis or Dat. This dis or dat questions category is watch out for the boom mic. Now I'm gonna read off seven movie titles, and for each one, I want you to tell me if the movie features Shaquille O'Neal or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. As each one comes up, if it's Shaq, press one. If it's Kareem, press two, and press four to skip. You get a thousand dollars for each right answer, but one thousand off for each one you miss or any that you just don't get to. All right, let's put 30 seconds on the clock. Let's dance. Forget Paris, Shaq reports. Airplane. Fletch. Kazam. Blue Chips. Slam Dunk Ernest. Last one, Game of Death. That's all she wrote. Only one wrong. Pretty damn good, cowboy. Let's toss that into your total. Good job on that. Keep it up. Okay, pick a category.
The selection is Teach Your Children Hell. Play your cards right, you win 4,000 bucks. Let's see how you handle this one. In the 1991 version of Cape Fear, Max Cady is a twisted rapist and murderer. He also sets a bad example for today's youth. What bad habit does he encourage in Juliette Lewis's character? Knuckle cracking, nail biting, thumb sucking, or nose picking? <laughs> While trying to seduce Danielle, Katie sticks his thumb into her mouth. Which led to another problem, talking with her mouth full. Category, please. Question 18. Honor student by day? Stripper by night. The category? While you're here, talk American. And we're talking 2000 for this baby. Listen up, kids. Get out your French dictionaries, s'il vous plaît, and complete this analogy. Royale with cheese is to quarter pounder with cheese as pret-a-porter is to what? Off the rack, haute couture, ready to wear, or tip the doorman. It would have been so beautiful if you'd only picked this. <laughs> Robert Altman's Pret-a-Porter translates to ready to wear for American audiences. See how fun French is. Now you can eat well, dress well, and we wherever you want. All right, hit me. Here we have, don't say the dog's name in church. 4,000 big ones for a right answer here. Okay, look lively. Get your fingers set to buzz in and start typing when you know the answer. It's your typical boy meets girl, boy invents optograph, boy makes fortune, invention makes people cross-eyed, boy loses fortune story. What is the name of this Steve Martin movie? All you had to do is type this. In The Jerk, Navin Johnson invents an eyeglasses handle that makes people cross-eyed. Thank God he never did any work with intimate apparel. I need a category. Now showing, I'll have the breakfast club sandwich. Oh, let's just make this one $6,000. Flex those fingers, cause here it comes. Let's say Ali Sheedy's character in the breakfast club opens a diner. Based on the meal she eats in the film, what ingredient would you not expect to find in the house special? Pixie sticks, white bread, peanut butter, or Cap'n Crunch? Would it have helped if I'd have said, don't pick the sticks? For the curious, here's the right answer. In the movie, she opens her sandwich, takes out the meat, and adds pixie sticks and cat and crunch, but no peanut butter. Have that for breakfast, and you'll feel sheety too. Okay, I need a category. Time for the attack. When you see two words that match, hit your buzzer. You get it right, you get 2,000 in the bank. Get it wrong, I'm making a withdrawal of 2,000. Just one more thing to remember. Remember the clue. The two words that match have to fit this clue. Where to go, what to do. Hey, I got an idea for you. Why don't you play a jack attack? Hmm, what a brilliant idea, Cookie. Oh, forget about it. Go have fun.
player, you ended up with less than nothing. Just think how bad your score would be if you were actually competing with somebody. And while we're on the subject... You don't know Great that. show, everyone. Very nice work. Raul, what are we doing now, babe? Wahoo, you made it onto the high scoreboard, but so what? It's like you were the first person to drive their car into an empty parking lot. Except after a few more games, I bet you get towed from your space. Let me know if you'd like to play again. On your toes, everybody! Don't get smart with me, Todd! Do you want a seven-question game or... Okay, got it! All right, people, we're gonna do it again! Category, please. Sorry, babe. It's question one. Say hello to... Ever notice how raptors have such small arms? And it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right. Hey, check it out. You know how the guy who plays Newman on Seinfeld is the villain in Jurassic Park? Say Newman smuggles the dino embryos out of Jurassic Park and into an episode of Seinfeld. Considering how he does this, what would the episode probably be about? Contraceptive sponges, shaving, gargling, or anal injury? In the movie, he tries to smuggle dinosaur embryos out of Jurassic Park in a shaving cream container. And in this episode of Seinfeld, Kramer will be trying to sell the dinosaur embryos to a prominent chicken roasting chain, or something like that. Okay, big category. Cut the red wire! Watch out, it's gonna blow! That was close. Too close. Let's give a nice warm welcome to, well, blow me down. And you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. Oh no, Olive Oil misreads the movie description at her local video rental store. Instead of seeing her hunky sailor boyfriend, Olive Oil watches a movie featuring a New York City cop nicknamed Popeye. What film did Olive rent? Magnum Force, Serpico, What's Up Doc, or The French Connection? Let's take a look at the right answer. Gene Hackman played the part of Jimmy Popeye Doyle in The French Connection. I love the part where Officer Doyle intercepts a huge shipment of spinach before it reaches the seedy New York underworld. I need a category. A question so real you can almost touch it! <laughs> Filmed in Spectacular 3D! <laughs> The category is, you can call me Ray, this one's worth a grand. Get your finger out of your ear and listen up, we're going. If you have x-ray vision, you can see through people's clothes, but if you had fey ray vision, what could you see? Gene Hackman is a New York cop, the sound of music, the seedy underbelly of LA's Chinatown, or King Kong's tonsils. Fay Ray is best remembered as the kidnapped heroine in the first King Kong film. I don't know about you, but I saw right through her performance. Okay, I need a category. My question for... For your enjoyment, I do do. And you pop a right answer, you got 2,000 bucks. Pull out your antenna and get ready to buzz. Say director Alan Alda releases a new version of Betsy's Wedding with the same cast called Betsy Wetsy's Wedding. Which of these scenes might the new version include? Molly Ringwald wets herself at the altar. Kimberly Williams pees on Alan Alda's tux. Samantha Mathis says, I go, not I do. Or Winona Ryder wears a yellow wedding dress. The correct answer is... Molly Ringwald plays the daughter that Alan Alda gives away in Betsy's wedding. Yeah, Betsy wets herself, but luckily, it all gets soaked up by the rice. 
All right, hit me. Excellent choice. It's time to play this or that. The category for this dis or dat question is Dumb and Deader. I'm gonna read out seven movies, and as each one comes up, I want you to tell me if the parents in question are dumb or just plain dead. As you see each one, if the parents are dumb, press one. If they're dead, press two. And press four if you want to skip. For each right answer, you get 500 bucks. And you lose 500 for a wrong answer or one you don't get to. All right, I'll start you off with 30 seconds on the clock. And let's go. Home Alone, parents dumb or dead? James and the Giant Peach. Now. Children of the Corn. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Powder. Last one. 16. That's all she wrote. Six right. Not quite perfect, but you can't get any closer. Let's throw it into your score. Okay, let's roll. Okay, pick a category. Password. Yeah, tell him six sent me. And I believe this one's called Frozen Nuts and Chocolate Sauce. Thousand bucks if you get it. Okay, imagine this. In honor of this actor's famous frozen expression, Dairy Queen names a new frozen treat after the silent film star nicknamed the Great Stone Face. What do they call it? The Shakes the Clown Shake, the Peanut Buster Keaton Parfait, the Hardy Bar, or the Phyllis Dilly Bar? Here's what you should have picked. His usually deadpan expression earned Buster Keaton the nickname The Great Stone Face. I think he was just sad because he wanted someone to buy him some Dairy Queen. Category, please. And there done that, let's get on with the attack. Work with this clue. From Kirk to Picard. Let's go on a little trek, shall we? Beam us up, Scotty. describe this game, but I'm going to choose blah. And then to describe you, I'd say... You 
Nice work, people. Cue the commercials and Raul, what's happening? We going again? Moving on up to the high scoreboard. Well, you know what that means. Doesn't mean dookie. We all here are unreservedly unimpressed. If you'd like to play again, just let me know. You need script morphs. Using simple Boolean logic, you can morph together up to 18 different film elements from a list of over 2,000 movies, characters, and settings. Script morph. Barbarella and Anna Karenina hijack a 747 in order to save the Empire from a mechanical cop. Set in Woody Allen's Manhattan with lyrics by Andrew Lloyd. Weber? You got it. With Scriptmorph, you can give that asinine studio exec a redraft in less than five minutes. Scriptmorph. Because you don't need to be a brilliant writer, you just need to make money. Gesticulate. Sequester. Coming soon to a theater near you. Protuberance. Opine. Hyperbolize. Acquiesce. Obtrude. Vilify. Ingurgitate. Thesaurus. Another word for hot. Engorge. Engorge. Special sneak preview this Friday at the Fine Arts Library Theater. Grab the kids and pack up the station wagon, America. Now there's a family alternative to all the sex and violence in theaters today. Come and enjoy a new Sensor Round Theater. When you attend a theater equipped with Sensor Round, you can be rest assured that your entire family can see the movies they want without all the icky parts. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a d We show some of the most popular movie titles of all time. The Hud Proxy, Village of the <laughs> Jurassic Park, Lassie <laughs> Home, and of course, anything by Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> So drag the whole family to your local Gigaplex and enjoy the mind-numbing comfort of Sensor Round. We do the thinking, so you don't have to. The year is 2017. CD-ROM trivia games, long considered obsolete by an oppressive and tyrannical government, have been outlawed. Quickly, down to the basement! You don't know Jack, also known as DKJ, becomes a favorite of the Resistance. If Carol Brady were a pig, what was that? Freeze! Government agents, known as firemen, infiltrate underground trivia competitions, arresting players, and seizing games. Captain, look at all these discs! God, trivia makes me sick. Burn them! Burn all the discs! You'll never get away with this! You don't know, Jack. 451. The answer is none of the above. Coming soon to a Gigaplex near you. Hey, Bob. A bunch of us are going to the movies Saturday night. You want to come? It's a new suspense thriller called The Jagged Throat Cut. Oh, um... What's wrong? What do I do? I can't tell her I almost wet myself at the last suspense movie I saw. Um, I forgot. I'm already doing something Saturday night. He's probably afraid. Well, maybe next time. Don't let suspense movie anxiety ruin your social life. If you constantly forget it's only a movie, then the movie goer ear buddy is for you. Just slip it into one of your ears and listen to its soothing voice. Remind you, it's only a movie. It's only a movie. Gee, Bob, it's only a movie. I'm glad you changed it's your mind and came with it's us. Only a movie. What? I said it's I'm glad you changed it's your mind. Shh. The movie goer ear buddy, taking the tension out of Tinseltown. 